Here's something I've been working on. I think you guys will find it interesting. So, I found this little deal on eBay. Basically, a used Enterprise UPS. It's an APC model. It has been through the usual process of um, going from new to used to totally unwanted and basically on the bargain bin. I chose a model that didn't have a battery. I didn't want to use lead acid. I figured I could go online, find myself some lithium iron phosphate alternatives. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, lithium iron phosphate is a battery technology that, uh, I wouldn't say it's recent, but it's recently gone into mass production. What differs between battery technologies uh, can be huge. Uh, in lithium iron phosphate case, it is more than happy to sit at 100% state of charge. Uh, similar to NMC uh, in terms of battery uh, watt hour density. I'm just gonna pan this down a little bit. It's similar to NMC in terms of power density. Um, NMC beats it up a little bit, but it's good enough. Um, the problem with NMC is that it's uh, a little bit more on the volatile. It doesn't pass the pin test. If you were to puncture an NMC battery, you would probably be dealing with a fire. With lithium iron phosphate, if you were to puncture it, um, the worst that you would get is some off-gassing and it would be business as usual. So here, we have the UPS. Uh, it's a little bit worse for wear. Scratched up, all that. I don't care. I, I like the industrial look. If it works, I'm happy with it. So, uh, I'm just gonna quickly make sure that I'm covering the main points of NMC versus a lead acid battery. It could very easily have gone with a, a cheaper 12 volt lead acid battery. The problem is that comparatively, I would get about half the power from the lead acid battery. Uh, and not only that, but I would also get half the shelf life. This battery is more than happy to sit at 100% for the entirety of its life. Now people have uh, been mentioning that you can discharge these down to like 0% state of charge and they're okay with it. They're not. You you sh really should leave about 10% in the tank for lithium iron phosphate as a battery technology. Uh, okay, so let's take a look at the APC. So here we have a scratched up display and on the rear, we have plenty of ports. This is a 1200 VA model. Now this, in and out gigabit, I'm not sure exactly what it means. Uh, I briefly looked through the quick start guide, um, got a couple details on the model. Nothing too fancy. Apparently it can be reprogrammed uh, here and there, but I'll Tear this apart and show you guys what I got. One more thing. I forgot to mention, uh, I don't think I have mentioned through this video series, that um, I don't want to say... I don't want to say I uh, document too much because I don't believe there is such a thing, but I do do a lot of documentation when it comes to items like this, and it has turned out to be very helpful. For example, um, I have a UPS where my remote server is located, and it has helped me in the past week to diagnose an issue with that. Um, so uh, this is normally the point where I would take a moment to wipe off any of the, you know, dust or whatever 
from this product, I would take a picture of all the sides, top, uh, front, top, left, right, underside, and then of course I'd take close-ups of uh, documentation, sorry, of uh, serial numbers and part numbers and whatnot. And yeah, and then I'd put it into a folder under the name of the manufacturer and model. Handy tip for anyone out there that's got more tech than they know to do with. Okay, so this doesn't make much sense, much sense to me. Uh, it's pretty easy to open this up, just press the tabs, pull up. But it came out, and I was told on the listing that there were no batteries. However, this is definitely, definitely a battery in here. Um, the thing is, it comes with the cartridge. The cartridge is hard to find. Um, I'm pretty sure inside here, even though I haven't seen it, these are 12 volt. They claim to be 9 amp hour batteries, but if you know anything about lead acid, you're not getting 9 amp hours out of it. You're probably getting about 50% of that at best. D -d 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 -d. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll try taking this apart and replacing that with lithium iron phosphate. On closer inspection, looks like there's no clean way of disassembling this. Just kind of have to pull the stickers off. Um, and be careful when opening them up, not to bend and break off the battery terminals. A um, little bit of bending on this one, but it's fine as far as I... Like, you can feel the swelling on these. These have been in service uh, for quite a while, probably long past their shelf life of, I think, uh, two years for lead acid. Probably been in service for about six or so, based on the the warping and the cracking of uh, this, this plastic. But yeah, I've seen this before. Something else I've noticed. Lithium iron phosphate is supposed to have a gravimetric energy density that is lower than NMC. But these are much lighter than these lead acid batteries. So if I just take this, Okay, this isn't gonna work. Carpeted floor. Okay, never mind. Those scales weren't meant for things this, this light. So you're gonna have to take my word for it that this is a lot lighter than this. Um, this is feeling something like maybe 1.2 kilos, and this is more like uh, 600 grams. So, about half the weight. Now, to put it together. Okay, after a healthy application of sellotape and double checking that I have everything together correctly, I think it's ready to go. Um, lots of layers of sellotape for so if I need to like really tug on this thing and I'm pulling it out, it should hold up. Yes, yeah, sellotape will decay if exposed to heat for long periods of time, but it should do the job. This is a total of 150 pounds worth of electronics, so I'm not too worried. Um, that being said, there is something you're going to need to watch out for if this is something you want to replicate. This is by no means a tutorial on how to replicate this, just here's what I'm doing. You need lithium iron phosphate batteries that have an integrated BMS, and you also need to check with the manufacturer's specifications how much voltage that BMS can tolerate. In my case, this is 24 volts uh, because they're in series for this UPS and the maximum the BMS can tolerate is 24 volts also, so this works out. In general, um, for the higher wattage uh, UPSs, you're looking for, uh, you're looking at 24 volts but still check the check the manuals of both and make sure you're safe so i'm going to go ahead and put this together and we're going to start testing oh. okay looks like we're in business uh i plugged it in powered it on unplugged it and the UPS functionality seems to be working as it's supposed to, I feel. Fans cooling the internals. 
Uh, I'll do more testing down the line, but honorable mention, I did see this electrical safety check from June 2016. That was a good year. Great year. Eight years ago. And um, the other one of the batteries, when I flipped it over, this is not shipping damage, but uh, that's definitely wear from the battery expanding and contracting. And this is dangerous. This is not good. So I'm going to make sure to take this to a battery recycling facility somewhere. Put that away for now. So yeah, all's gone well. Hope you enjoyed the video.